What's new? What's happening? I'm going to tell you. Well, it's been a few days, and um, as you're aware, I got back from Columbia, and uh, my laptop was fixed, and I went like crazy and pumped out a whole bunch of videos. Um, then my laptop went haywire again, kind of put the brakes on. But since uh, since I saw you last, or you saw me, I met with four different uh, gringo couples, uh, a few that have moved here and a few that are on exploratory visits and I'm happy to say that every visit was a lot of fun actually. Uh, the first one, I won't go through detail on all of them, but the first one was interesting in that um, uh, the husband is a retired FBI field agent and so it was interesting talking to him and we talked for a number of hours and uh, we went to what I had termed the number one burger in Cuenca, uh, the uh, Prague Golden Brew Pub. And he ordered a burger. We didn't talk about the burgers at all, but it was extremely disappointing. My burger was overcooked, it was a little dry, the bread was a day old, um, just got they got sloppy and did a bad job again like the first time I went so uh, I guess it's hit and miss wherever you go but enough on that I got a lot of comments on my video on construction and some were good valid comments and some were just uninformed crap uh, one of the things that was being said was that the uh, bricks are are uh, held in and supported by these concrete beams and I'm aware that's how it's supposed to go I'm also aware that architects here are important people they're professional people they're looked up to they're addressed very politely uh, they're educated and ethics and morals it's important to their profession and in every architect or every building has an architect involved however they're not doing the actual work and it's real easy to have some unscrupulous conniving thieving employee somewhere along the way that throws a wrench in the works and I'm here to tell you that happens now, for example, this, the one gentleman that said these concrete su uh, supports are all the load bearing and the bricks are just there. Well, let me give you two examples of why that's not always true. First of all, they're not beams that come on a truck and they pick up and, and put up there. They put the brick up and then they put a form and they put the concrete in. Now, when the con concrete's wet, it's sitting on the brick. The brick is load-bearing. But I'll tell you a trick that I saw firsthand that some unscrupulous builders will do. Where they decide it doesn't matter, they'll take the concrete and they'll put it over the brick to give it the appearance that that concrete beam is there but behind it is just more brick so the person who you know basically thought I was crazy like I get where you're coming from and if every building was like I said the place would be a disaster everybody would know about it that wasn't my point I'm not saying all these buildings are bad I'm saying that because there's no standard at all in, from the concrete mix to the quality of the brick to the type of person building it that it really is a crapshoot and if you're considering property it's something you need to think about and pay attention to 
maybe the only way to be sure is if you did the building yourself or had it done and you were there constantly but then you really need to know what you're doing in order to do that now what's the percentage I don't know but I didn't make up that building that I showed in the video where that third floor had collapsed. It collapsed, it came apart, and it was shoddy building. There was nothing there but very thin, breakable bricks. And it didn't take much for them to fall apart. So I don't make things up on these videos, and I spent a couple years observing, asking questions, uh, to educate myself on what was going on and then I it has been said that my videos are just negative well here's the thing I'm not sure it would be a very good video I'm not sure it would be worth watching or worth doing if all I did was say all these houses are perfect Okay, what's the point? You see, it also would not be true. Most houses, I'm sure, are fine. But there are these issues. And it's not a little bit. It's a fair amount. And the purpose of these videos is to let people know what to watch out for. So that they don't fall into a trap. And so, that's my point. It's not that I'm trying to be negative. I was asked, you know again and again well why do you live here if you hate it so much I don't hate it I live here because I choose to live here but I don't do puff videos pumping up Cuenca as some Shangri-La perfect land because if you want to see that there's lots of them out there pretty much every other video because people have a vested interest in selling you Cuenca they're going to tell you nothing but flowery, wonderful things. I don't need to be one more. There's no, there's no point. But nobody out there is really telling you the downsides that you need to watch out for. I've said it again and again and again. It's not me being negative. Every place on this planet that I'm aware of, every place I've been to, has its pluses and minuses. It doesn't benefit me to really hear nothing but the pluses if I go somewhere. It benefits me if somebody says, hey, watch out for this area because at night it's kind of seedy. Or you don't want to go to this area and rent a hotel room because it's notorious for this, this, and this. <coughs> to me, those are the things that are important. It doesn't mean I don't want to go there. It doesn't mean I don't enjoy the visit. But getting a heads up makes that much more enjoyable, makes it more worthwhile. And if you're going to live in a place, it's all the more important to know what you're getting into so that you can adjust, accommodate, watch out for yourself so that you know how to handle things. And that's all it's about. So it's not about being negative. It's about being honest. I had a nice surprise on one of those meetings and it was the hamburger meeting as a matter of fact all said and done getting ready to leave and he said oh wait a minute I got something for you and he pulls out this bag and inside this bag is a big jug of maple syrup he says we've been watching your videos I don't know, here that was probably a $30 jug of maple syrup. Of course, he bought it back there, but uh, it was greatly appreciated and it's, uh, it's pretty yummy and I'm trying to keep everybody from drinking it down. It's so delicious. So thank you for that. Well, it's getting close to that time. As a matter of fact, it's tomorrow night. I've been uh, getting ready and packing for Columbia. I went and got my bus ticket today. You got to get it a day ahead of time. I have a side trip that I've got to do uh, in Medellin. So I'm going to actually fly from Cali to Medellin and then I'll go back to Armenia. Um, I've got a little job to do there and uh, so I'll be two or three days um, in Medellin. 
I don't know that I'm going to do a whole lot of video while I'm there. I may. I'll try. But I will be pretty busy. Uh, I'm taking my GoPro. problem with GoPro is there's no microphone that's worth using. Unless I get an adapter that I, I've only been able to locate in the United States. Uh, I'm not taking my laptop, so I'll be editing no videos while I'm there. And I'm not taking my regular camera like I did last time. So we won't be having these. So I will be doing some things, but it's going to have to wait till I get back. And I'm not sure how long I'm going to be gone. I'd say 14 days at the most, maybe 10 days. Um, I don't have an extended visit in mind. I've got some specific things that I need to accomplish. So I'm going to go, do what I need to do, and then return. Now, on my way to the terminal today, I happened to uh, get in the most perfect taxi I have discovered in Cuenca. Now, first of all, his taxi meter functions. All the numbers light up like they're supposed to. Right next to it, he's got a receipt printer. And it's all up there where you can see it. It's not hidden behind a visor or down under the dash. It's right there, looks good, ready to go. He's got the safety covered. He's got a crucifix hanging with a cross, hanging from uh, his mirror. And he's got a couple little Jesus pins on the roof. So we're safe to go. And then he's got his uh, direction finder, his GPS, through Azu Taxi, which I will mention I did. I called him to my house through Azu Taxi, and he arrived in less than two minutes. Came right to the house, no problems. It's a nice new Kia, very comfortable. He keeps it immaculate, looks brand new. And if you look behind his shifter, he's got a little change thingy so that there's always coins to give back for change. So instead of saying he doesn't have the change, He's got it right there for all to see. And in his council, he's got some bills laying there. This guy is organized. He's good to go. He's wired into uh, Azu Taxi. He used his GPS to find the best route. He actually took me to the terminal on a route I've never been because it's not the standard route. But we got there really fast. And it was about 25 to 50 cents less than it pretty much always takes. So this guy just hit it out of the park. I did ask his permission if I could uh, do a little video. And he's, he just laughed and said, yeah, go ahead, no problem. So the perfect Cuenca taxi. With that, I'm going to run to Super Maxi. i got to get some extra dog food for Delta before I go. And a few other items to pack away. Uh, this will be my last video, most likely, until I get back from Columbia. So I will see you soon. You know you could.